Hey, Scott Spears back with the legendary Hall of Famer, one of my favorite people, Thunderbolt Patterson. WWE Class of 2024, a member of the Hall of Fame as of Friday, April the 5th. And by the way, if you want to see that induction ceremony, go to the Peacock Network, search 2024 Hall of Fame, and you'll see both of us as mm. part of that program. Thunderbolt, this week, I want to start talking about your sister that raised you. Jesse Lee. Jesse Lee. How did it come that your sister raised you? Well. She was older than you. She was my oldest sister. Old, she was the oldest child that my parents had. Yeah. Now, what kind of lady was she? Good as gold. She was there. She took care of all of us. Yeah. How long did she live? Oh, she was, she died in 2000, ten. I mean, she was old. Long too. life, too. Yeah. She was about 90. Oh, she's in her 90s, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good bloodline. Well, yeah, hey, it's all about the blood. It is about the blood. It's all about the blood. You know, understanding that now, and that's a whole other thing that, uh, who, who? I don't want to talk about that blood, that, cause that blood did it. Yeah, that's something to talk about, there, man. Okay. Now, now, your sister did she raise you because your mother died young? Or oh no, 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 no. She raised me. I hung out with her. I, she took me everywhere she went. And my mother was like a homebody. Like I said, I was, I was growing up in a. Like a joke joint. My mother's daughter's at home. And, yeah. So let's get to, it's mentioned here, it was mentioned the other night in the video, your promo ability, your ability to talk. When did you first realize that you had an ability to talk to people? I mean, I've been talking ever since I started talking. And I mean, I, did, I mean, you know, it's a just a natural thing, you know. I'm, I'm, I I'm ain't following nobody or trying to be like nobody. Or I'm I'm when I understood there was a God and started going to church. I really wanted to be a minister, but I did not want to play with God. I was in the street, Doc. I mean, you name it, I did it. I'm pretty near. So, you know, I just, uh, I, and when I left Waterloo, my pastor, Red Mares Rucker, told me, son, whatever you do, take God with you. And man, if it hadn't, and if I had known the whole story, like I know now, from the beginning of time, I was chosen for this very purpose. This is my purpose. Because that's really, he has always made the provision. I mean, I, I was shut down just dealing with little pennies and, you know, da, 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 da. So if somebody would have came to you, and let's say, we talked earlier about, let's say you got Luthez in the main event. Let's say you're, and they said, Thunderbolt, go out there. Talk about your match tonight with Luthez. Give him a... What I, mean, I, mean, I didn't have to talk with no match with Luthez. Do what you want to do. That's all I had to say. And we would do it. You know, we didn't have to sit down and figure out this and that. We Did done it. whatever, and I done whatever they, he wanted me to do. So if you had to go out on television and promote that match, how would you do it? That's a real good question there, man. Lou was the best. And all all of them from Lou and thereafter put me in their rank, you know. So it'd been very hard to say, to show up. Sure, because we're gonna give we're gonna tear the house down. That's all it is. We're gonna have we're gonna give you what they call what you paid that ticket for. We ain't going to Hollywood and whatever. We're going to give you a wrestling match. Want to talk about some of your famous catchphrases, as they say. It's no. going to be a new day. What, isn't it? WWE. They have the new day. That's a new day. For me? 
And you too. I mean, for me, I'm talking about me. Now, I can't talk about nobody else. I can't take my own business. You know what I'm saying? But for me, if it had not been for the Lord, I would not be. Better call somebody. Hey, you better let somebody know if you got a friend. Tell them that we're going to be there tonight. Look over things. <laughs> Make sure everything go right. <laughs> <laughs> the one that they always talk about came late in your career. You, you, you. It was a house show. It was the WCW era. Ole Anderson's in one corner. You're in another, and you cut this promo. Ole, don't you move? Oh no, 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 no. Straighten me no, out no, on no, that. No, no, Straighten no, me no, out. No. That that was they they bring me back. They bring me back and. I don't know who Ole was in that corner with or for, but I was in somebody else's corner. So, man. All, all that I wanted to, him to understand, if he moved, oh, if he moved, I'm going to touch your body, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all I was, you know. It became a classic, though. Well. There you go. And, and the other. And, and well, see, see. Oh, uh, and, and who made that classic? The fans. No, 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 no. 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 Who made? Who, who? What interview was that with? Who was that with? Only. And and who put it out on the on the thing though? Who talk about it? Oh, Cornette. Well, okay. I mean, that that's one of them that he talk about. Yeah, and the other one we're getting there. Oh, if I only had time. If I only had time. If, if, I, only do, had if I had time, boy, I'm telling you the truth. It ain't no <laughs> that, That's one of the great stories. And, and that even made a reappearance the other night in your Hall of Fame speech. Well, it, I mean, it, you, you did. You said that at one point. Oh, if, did? if I only had time. Well, 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 well you know, I, I didn't want to go over my limit. You know, because, you know, them dating. Uh, I didn't want to talk. I don't want to talk too much. Let me tell the story as Cornette tells it, and you tell me what's right and what's wrong. Cornette tells that story as Ole Anderson is the booker, and he says to you, we only got 30 seconds left on the TV show, and we're going to be in Carrollton. Mm -hmm. So Thunderbolt, go out there and say, Carrollton, Carrollton, Carrollton in your promo, so fans will come. You go out there, and you never mention Carrollton. You just say, if I only had time to tell you what I wanted to tell you. I couldn't tell them what I was going to do when I get there. They know that I was coming. And they know I'm going to do the best I can when I get there. That became famous, though. Well, I they mean. They still talk they, about it. They, they didn't mean it for it to come famous. But it did. They didn't mean it for it to come famous, though. So. They meant it as, you know what he called me. I do know what he also, called but me. I, and I ain't going to say it no more now. No. Not on there like that. Yeah. Who he called. Mm. Some language. You, that's really. Y'all listen to me. There were so many times I feel that cussing of what I had to go through. And I mean, it was hard because if many if I, I might want to cuss them out. But I had to give them fans some type of respect. Cause them babies is out there, them kids out there. I had to give them some type of respect in there. So I, I think why that became famous for a for a time was that most people would have maybe gone out, if, if Ole had said, listen, go out there and mention Carrollton, they would have said, hey, make sure you come to Carrollton on Wednesday or whatever. I, uh, I have to do what I feel, what I feel. I, I can't deal with no script. I can't, you know, you, you give me, a, uh, I, I got to shoot from here. Turned out better Tell that me. way. Turned hey, out better I'm that way. I'm coming, I'm coming from me. Honest and the truth, and how I feel. Now, take it the way you want them. Now, we said we, said we were going to get into this this episode. You and Jerry Briscoe, integrated tag team. One of the first. That's what you say. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, I met Jerry when he was in school. I mean, I met Jerry when I was in Amarillo. And he'd come over, come over to uh, Amarillo to television. And I didn't see Jerry no more until uh, 1972, I guess. Now, I had worked, me and Jack. 
Because I had went to, uh, Fritz had sent me to Florida for then, and I had, mm, me and Jack was with Jack all over, boy. How good was Jack? Hey, hey. Another one of the good guys. Hey, hey, hey. A machine. Now, Jerry, what was it like tagging with him? That was one of my best pupils. He could wrestle. I mean, he, you talking about a little tough son of a gun? And could wrestle, he knows how to wrestle, man. And uh, I, I didn't teach Jerry nothing other than take care of yourself. Don't let him take advantage of you, that's all. Now we talked about paymasters. You talked about the sheep being fair, but not great. Mm -hmm. Who was the worst paymaster? Well, I, I try to stay away from them. Well, who was the best say, then? Let's go the other way. Who was the best? Well, I, I, I made so much money in, in uh, Amarillo. I took one of them big old three suitors. Pretty near big that thing head over there. Full of money. And my, really? my wife fainted. I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. you, but she, uh, 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 Graham and uh, 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 Mr. Crockett. Old man Crockett, senior, not them boys now, was best. Now, so one thing you did in the ring, which was a great, great move, you would slip out of a headlock. Mm -hmm. How did that come to be part of your arsenal? That's me. That's you. I mean, I, I, I can do more than one thing. Well, the, the way you moved in the ring, if I people mean, watch it. Oh, I used to, I used to, like, I used to like dance a lot. I used to do it all. I mean, I do even I, see, I was a cowboy. I used to do a little line. I, when I could stand up and step, I could do a little line there. Y'all know a little about line then, don't you? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't know a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, James Brown, so we're talking about James Brown. There's a great story out there that came about on the Briscoe JBL podcast about you and James Brown. Well, I passed the police one night. We were running late. Daddy just bought a new car. And I passed the police doing 103 miles an hour. And he took my car. And wouldn't let nobody in the car drive. <laughs> <laughs> and that was right outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. And he took us to jail. Well, you and Briscoe. Me, Briscoe, Ronnie Garvin, too. I see. I think it was me, Briscoe, and Ronnie Garvin. Yeah. yeah. And when we. When they took us, well, they couldn't keep us, so whatever, we paid a fine or whatever, whatever the, the, John Ringley, we were on our way to uh, Richmond, Virginia. They, uh, 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 the boy that promote Raleigh called, and they sent the plane for us. We dressed in the plane, whatever, yeah. So, and just to make sure, John Ringley was part of the Crockett organization. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Yeah, I talked to him the other day, too. I ain't talked to him and who? Oh, he's still around. Yes, sir. John yeah, Ringley's still around. Yeah, yeah. What a hey, man. Who? How about that? Oh, I didn't know man. he was still around. Oh, yeah. Good to hear. So, uh, but the James Brown part of this is, is that before you knew that Ringley had sent the plane, James Brown was in the airport, right? Or in the area. They come in. Yeah. He was just coming in. And we were just sitting out there waiting on him. Yeah. So James Brown offered, because of you, Knowing you being a fan of yours, he said, "If they need like my he, plane, it looked like he, he was going to take us up there." And you know, this is the Godfather but, of soul. Yeah, yeah. Really. I mean, I mean, I got a lot of fans out there. That I don't know nothing about. Well, that, well, you know well that, that, that's a good one to have. Well, yeah, bless his heart. Yeah. You told me something the other night about one of the other inductees, the legendary Muhammad Ali, who went in the other night. Yeah. That you said one time you were asked to be part of a roast. Yeah. That they were now tell that story. That's good. Well, well, I mean, at, at that time, I couldn't roast him. I couldn't play with him. I couldn't say no stupid things. Uh, that wasn't no fun to me. He was too much on hey, what he done. You know, I just couldn't do it. And what was he like to you? Well, I, I, uh, 
I wanted, I offered to, I wanted to go to Japan because I thought they were gonna hurt him. Anoki. Yeah. 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 I thought he was gonna hurt him. Try to try to hurt him there, and uh, but they wouldn't let me go. Now, um, of course, that's a famous match in history, Anoki oh, yeah, versus yeah, Muhammad yeah, Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that went boxer that, versus... That, he stayed on the float all the time. And, and was, I think Ali got a little leg problem from kicking, you know, and I, but I, I don't know nothing too much about it. Now, I want to come up to the end of your national wrestling career on in WCW. Because that's where a lot of the tapes still exist. That's what we saw a lot of in your Hall of Fame video, was from those WCW years. When you were there, you came back, you wrestled at Slambury, you were at that breakfast we talked about before with Rashke and Ivan Koloff. You managed the ice train. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, how, how did that come to be? Well, originally, I mean, originally, the Steiner. Old Ole, Ole had uh, put me with the Steiners, and man, that could have been something there. But then they, they put me with uh, the ice train, and they wanted to use me, you know, to get him over, and I, I wasn't going to do that. So at that point, and again, because you, obviously, clearly you're an honest man, what kind of situation because people were starting to make good money at that point in wrestling. This is the early nineties. The taking yeah, yeah. yeah. Well 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 he went in without me to, and got a little piece of money. So when you went in Oh Eric Bischoff asked me what could I do to help the organization. So Eric uh, and what Eric you, Bischoff. Yeah. And what did you say to Eric? I cussed him out. I can't see it. <laughs> no, yeah. So at that point that was the end of well, I, I ain't go back. Uh, no, I didn't go back. So until I didn't see when Ole that was was that WCW? That was WCW. Did it go to Georgia Championship Wrestling? No, no, that was that would that would have been near the end. WCW okay, okay. Well, ninety three. Okay. Yeah. So so when this is going on. Uh, what is a manager of Ice Train making at that point? I have no idea. I had no idea. I had no idea what none of them, I, I, uh, you know, they would come. The first, I, I, all I know was the first thing that Lex Luger was the first one to make, to get signed uh, $750,000, man. Now, what were you getting? Oh no, no! Don't do that! Don't, don't do, do that! Don't no! Don't Bad do end! Don't don't see see how you see how they no nah, no! Don't do me like that! No, we can go past that. Yeah, well, I don't I, I don't don't make me mad because it's all about money, man. Well, you know what's interesting there is you have talked about not they signed Luger to a contract seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. You say you never were under contract anyway. I was under one contract. One contract. One 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 worth the ink that was wrote on the paper, and that was from them. Them boy, the boys, Jimmy Crockett and David Crockett, yeah. Now, when we look back at the WCW days, you did do some stuff there. You came back with Ole. You came back and did the ice train thing. You came back for Slamboree and did that. What was it like working with Turner, the Turner organization at that time? Well, they made a fool out of Turner, man. All of them. I mean, Turner was a good... A good they, they, would, they kept me away from Turner. Yeah. So it was, what, how would you say that locker room was in those days? Man, I wouldn't deal with none of them folks. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, they, 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 hush, hush. They didn't want to, they wouldn't let me know nothing. And they knew not to mess with me. There's an interesting video. It's in your Hall of Fame package. And the people can see the full interview on, uh, on um, YouTube if you go there. You're being interviewed by Teddy Long. But on the opposite side, here sits Gordon Soley and the legendary Andre the Giant. No. No. Uh-uh. No. You mean that at that? Not, not the breakfast. No, it's the, there's another one. I think it was the 25th anniversary of wrestling on TBS, but Andre's there. Oh, well, 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 
that, that probably was the first one you were talking about. Yeah. Well, man, that one. They all them guys, they bought them in through. You know how they do. They had me coming down through the strutting, doing the da 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 and this is such and such, getting all the limbs, da 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 da. Man, they bought me all the way around the back of the desert and set me out there with the audience. What, what was Andre like? A, a, a gentle giant. Did you ever have a match with him? I worked as a partner with him one time. So he, he was a gentle man? Yeah. The stories about his drinking are well, legendary. He, he could drink any. So t tell us about Andre. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't around him that much. Didn't hang out. I didn't hang out with, I wasn't hanging out with nobody then, but to myself, cause I wasn't a part of. I know that bad news, Brown, bad news, know Allen. I don't know him. But he had spoken about Andre that Andre may have been. I have no idea. A little racist is what. Well, I have no. I hey, I. You never saw see, that. See, that's. I don't know, man. I wasn't around. He never done said a word around me. You know that that's just like Teddy Long talk about Oli. What he said. He is a lie. He's a lie. You know. I mean. Let's talk about the happy weekend we just had. Hall of Fame here. Thank you. How did this come to be? Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. It's that simple. Gerald, Bris Ger Gerald Briscoe. It took Gerald Briscoe five years to get me into the Hall of Fame, the Luthiers, Dan Gable College and Professional Hall of Fame in my hometown. It took him five years to get me in there. And it, the next thing, you no, know, COVID shut us down on the, the COVID, 20th. Yeah. Yeah, 19. And then Brian Blair, Brian Blair, one of the killer bees, brought me to the cauliflower club. That's where all the movie stars and all the money. Da, 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 da. Cauliflower and Alley. Cauliflower, yeah. Club. Club. Yeah. Out in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh Man, you know what? You know, I mean, just you know, I uh, I tried to. I was gonna go home and build me a little log cabin at home, but it was I, I, and I while I was there, a lady wanted me to come back and do a for a, a guy's birthday party, cause I, he said that we. I, him and his dad bonded through him taking him to matches, but his dad died, and I never did meet him. But uh, I came down here on 16th of February, I think it's two years ago. And I went back on the 19th. Man, it was 12 inches of snow <laughs> and 20 below zero. And that was on, that was on a... a Saturday, at Wednesday night, at Wednesday, at Wednesday morning, I was, I come back to Georgia. Out of Iowa. I, I, out of Iowa, and uh, I was on my way to my baby. My baby has a, my man cave, but it's upstairs. Just like Donnie, I got man cave on Lake Spidey. That's in Atlanta, Lake Spidey. And, and, and uh, uh, Upstairs, you know, and I, I'm old laid. I got two artificial hips, and but they're good. To, but my friend, my friend, Malaysia McGillicuddy, and and uh, Alfred, call him Big Boy. My family home is 48 miles from where I squatting in Carrollton, Georgia. And I, my my grandbabies and stuff. Like that. I can't live with my grandkids. I mean, uh, I can't. I, 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 some things I don't put up with. I can't do it. I can't do it. So, so they're in the family home right now. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah. So the the Hall of Fame April fifth comes. You fly into Philadelphia. 
What's that day like, April the 5th? You were there, weren't you? I, I was we there. We met up, didn't we? We did. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a... Uh, it was a whole... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Maybe two. Two weeks. Two, three weeks before that. Uh... I laid on my back on the floor for two days. I couldn't get up. When I got up, Briscoe called me. And him and Brad Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Yes. Excuse me, Bruce. <clears throat> Jerry told me, he said, listen. Listen, don't say nothing, just listen. Because yeah. everyone knows that I uh, said I never would accept it. Because God had took care of me. I don't need nothing. God give me everything I need. I don't need nothing. So what did Bruce and Jerry say in that call that changes your mind? Yes, well... Man. Wow. Now, Gerald was always, I, I never known uh, Bruce, never met him uh, until this year. And uh, uh, Gerald don't play. Gerald uh, is about the honest human being I've ever met in real. I mean, we live. He lived upstairs. We had condominiums, condominiums, I mean. He lived upstairs and I had one downstairs. Then my, then my, and them godchildren. I'm, I introduced him to his wife. You did, you did. Gerald was a big, Gerald and I, in North Carolina, we set it a fire. You know, and he told me, when he called, he said, Bo, don't say a word, just listen. And Gerald explained to me, and uh, what Gerald say, I'm with him because I know he's with me. And uh, uh, when I arrived, at Bruce Pitchett, hey man. That's an organization. Now, uh, <laughs> I fail. I mean, I, I failed him. I, I, I oh, like, he can. He know him probably because he was raised up as a kid there, in Paul Bosch in Texas. I mean, I did some of my best work in Texas. If I'm there, it was two territories: Amarillo. And the Dallas area, you know. That was the Amarillo and all around through there, and then Dallas is Houston and, and, and Corpus, all there, you know, two different areas. And, and, and uh, um, God told me, get out the way. And I understand that He had opened a door. He had touched some individuals, you know, we get to a point in life, you don't want to play no more games, real people, and you don't run into them. Very often. We've talking about that for a pretty little while, Scott. And we're going to come back after this short break. It's a hard, if we only had more time, we're going to come well, back. come on, T.A. I know, I stole two. Stealing my stealing stuff. the material. <laughs> we're coming back talking about Bruce and Jerry right after this. Yeah. Hey, back here with the legendary Thunderbolt Patterson. We just got back from the WWE Hall of Fame in What a time we had. Huh? It was a great weekend. Yeah, great. And, that, and you know what? People can say what they want, as I've said before. They can say we're being nice because we were just up there. WWE puts on a great hospitality. They have great well, hospitality. You know what? You know what? I've learned 
that w, uh, WWE has been doing this for a long time. And I mean, the, 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 the organization that they have up there is, uh, a, I mean, I've never seen nothing like it. Well, I want to tell a couple of true stories here because I had never met Bruce. Uh, Bruce had been on my radio show years ago, but I never met oh, Jerry. Oh, you're right. He had. He had. And okay. uh, great episode with Bruce Pritchard. Uh, I really liked him when he was on. He did two hours with me one time. What year was that, man? I'm thinking 2016, 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so mean, he's ago. been tied in with the yeah, he's been WWE on. for a long time. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. And what I want to say, Bruce is is really running a lot of things up there, and he's producing the show. And I want to tell this story because people wouldn't know this, but Bruce Pritchard. During the Hall of Fame ceremony, there's a lot going on. He's a busy man during that time. He's got a headset on. He's back there working. And when we came back through the curtain, he said to me, he took off his headset, stood up, shook my hand, said, that's a great speech. This is our writer, Brian. I don't think you've been introduced to him. And this is during a live show that he stops to do this. This is a very cordial Kind man, because well, that's not well, on camera. Man, well, see, I was sitting somewhere. I, I mean, I can't. I don't know just what holding it was. position. I was there with I you. I don't know what where it was or how it was, but I mean, I felt someone hug me. I mean, and lean and and he was happy, and that's what I I come to make. Him and Gerald Briscoe happy because I thank God they understand me and all those fans out there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And and I'm to, for being away from no. Thank God for Bruce Pritchett. And Jerry Briscoe. And I want to tell a story about Jerry Briscoe because Jerry Briscoe was up in the box with me. Now that was when you were down in the uh, holding holding pen, holding pen, holding pen at the at the arena during WrestleMania. And every time Jerry, well, first of all, he said same thing, great speech that night after the show. But every time he would walk by me for the rest of the weekend, he'd always you know tap me on the arm, how you doing, good to see you. And when he got back home, he went on social media and put. Awesome job, Scott. Great speech. Thank you for All what right, you did. Yeah. This is an... I'm, I'm a big Jerry Briscoe fan. Well, I thank you very much. I mean, uh, uh, that's how God works. It's got, uh, if you can understand and believe this here, man, before we all was born, before the earth was created, we were chosen to meet and work with Bruce and, and we should mention, by the way, we're doing our podcast here, but uh, Bruce has a great podcast with Conrad Thompson that they do, and Jerry has a great uh, podcast, with, which you've been on, with uh, JBL that they well, do. I so mean, check that, them out. Hey, 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 hey. I'm talking about Super Bowl family. We got enough. Yeah. Those are you know what I mean? We got enough. I mean, it's, together we stand, and with our Father in heaven, we will not fall. Now, Thunderbolt, at this point, if you could write what happens next, what would you want to do? Well, that's, that's, that's all in the next episode. See, as I said, the book should be ready now, because... Chad is getting that together. But there's the, I done the movie script before the book that's in this locker. My storage up there. You understand what Can I'm I saying? I'm doing, Hollywood kept me for four years and paid me for four years. You hear me? And I, I didn't get a whole nother chapter now. Yeah. You, you, know, you follow me? I'm I'm roll I'm I'm, 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 I'm I'm we roll and we roll we we roll and we're WWE. You know it is so interesting because we've been together for a while now doing things. How long? How long? Um, how long? How long? How long? Years how long? and years we've done we've done a lot of stuff, and it's fascinating because and I'm so happy because for years I never thought this day would come. Meaning I'd heard you say if they offered you would not do it. 
And, you know, you in the WWE, you had never really worked up I there. Know, no, yeah. no, no. So that was not a thing. And now, here the day has come. That is a happy well, place to be. Well, like I told you, man, I made up in my mind that I ain't following nobody but Jesus. And Jesus done done it. The blood, the blood. That Virgin Mary. And when it was changing of that polluted blood, they crucified Jesus. And he hadn't done nothing. Nothing. But he rose from the dead. And to give all of us black, white, red, yellow, and brown the same opportunity. He, Martin Downey's show, that's oh, all I'm yeah. asking for, is a chance. I don't need anybody to give me nothing. I can get it myself. Let, let's talk about that, because that's, oh, that's, that's, that's on that, YouTube. I mean, hey, hey, I mean, I, I did, the thing is, the, the hit man, let me tell you something. See, there's too many liars, haters, killers, and hypocrites out there. You understand? They say one thing, but they'll stab you in the back or put you down before you turn turn your back. You hear me? How were you brought on to that Morton Downey show? Jim Wilson. Okay. Jim Wilson was a friend of mine, and uh, uh, I graduated from the Labor Institution in Washington, D.C. I used to work with S SEIU, Service Employment Network. Reverend James Orange, you know, uh, we were part of the, 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 the most strongest hand I've ever touched in my life was Mandela. When he come to the King Center, we were, James Orange and I, we helped uh, uh, get the birthday of Martin Luther King birthday. You know, no, no, Jesus is love. And Martin Luther King said, Jesus, love is action. And I worked for the union. And uh, I walked all over the United States trying to help folks. You know what I mean? The racial card has been played too long, then wore it, then wore it out. You know, and you know, here, would you ever think here we be in 2024 and the same dude. Is going on? Hmm? Oh, you understand what I'm Still saying? Here. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I didn't understand. I'll put it that way. I didn't understand. But you need to check yourself and get yourself ready because ain't nobody above the law. And time is winding up. And Jesus is in charge. The blood, the blood did it, giving God all of the glory. So when you went on, Morton Downey, how would you describe that? Because a lot of people have watched that online. Well, how do you describe it? January 6th. Yeah. They just didn't break in no doors. They just didn't kick down the wall. They just wasn't going to hang nobody. They, I mean, yeah. It was a rough episode. Hey. They was rough there too. Yeah. You know, I mean, just like they were the chokes, the, 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 the chokes there. He threw water in what James in what James face. Yeah. And uh, what and, and and but only one thing that he said that was true. What did he say? What did, what did Shokes say? Do you do, can you remember what he said? He talked a lot. I'm trying to remember what did he say that. You can't remember. I remember he said you main evented. Well, I was main again when I was everywhere I went, I was main. Yeah. But do you can't remember what he said? He said, and I want y'all to look this up. And what year was that? 89. Okay. Uh y'all look this up. Shok said, You ain't got nothing. You ain't never had nothing. Ain't gonna have nothing. Tell him about you saying that Jesus. Come oh. to the ring with you every time. I do remember. If that. it had not been for him, I couldn't have whooped them ones that didn't. Oh, you hear me? 
I do. Hey, I, I mean, they lying. You know, yeah, do you, do you, do you think that I called Jim Barnett on what the hell big boy name? Uh, B Edie? Bill Edie. Yeah, you, you know Bill what he, he, no, he What did he say? Bill Edie said. Say he ran through, he done something to Greg the other day. Yep. And then he ran through him. Why didn't he run through me? And, and then say I went and called. Barnett. And, but, then, but what did he say? He said you tried to get him fired. I tried to tell you. But then, then what did he say? He, he said he didn't, he didn't care for you. He, he didn't like me at all. Didn't like well, me. Well, you know, I shook his hand at that thing. You did? But, yeah, I was, it was odd, but I did. But you did it. But, 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 you know, through it all, through it all, do you think that I would call anybody and squeal? I'll come, I'm from the streets. You know, you don't, you don't uh, uh, rat on nothing. They go on in the street. Do you don't have to call nobody. God equipped me. I whoop him by, beat his God, <laughs> boom. You, you understand what I'm saying? And that's what they didn't like. Uh, every, every, every punch I thought I could have knocked his head. Uh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. I could have knocked him down. A down or out. Or whatever, if I want. If. If I wanted, if you want to, if you want to, do, and could took him down rapidly and squeezed me very fast. <laughs> you, I didn't call nobody on nobody, but then he said, "What did he say?" That you would not lose. No, no, no. He said, "Who had to take the brunch of it?" Yes. Only oh, had to work with me. Oh, and we sold yes. it out. Oh, I do remember that. And it yeah. sold out. You understand? Yeah. Ain't never been part of nothing that didn't sell out. And there's a lot of that out there. You know, Dutch Mantel said oh, a few yeah, things yeah, and man. all that, this. They, they, a lot of them don't know what they're talking about. I mean, you know, not about with me. They talking about what they done heard or what folks done told them. Why do you think they say that stuff? They got a job and they own the, that outside world. I mean, you know how that is, loyal to the paycheck, still working. I ain't worked in 35 years. I ain't worked in 35 years. You understand what I'm saying? And here we are. And here we are. I ain't working for nothing. Now. Finna build me a brand new house. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now, Thunderbolt, when it comes, one thing you touched on there, I want to touch on before we run out of time here, is unionization of wrestling. That's brought up a lot. That you tried to unionize. Well, that's what you see. So, what yeah. happened? What's the true story? I done it. I mean, I tried my best. I went on that show. I was trying to get the all of those wrestlers on that show. What did, they wouldn't let me say, what, did you remember what Martin Donnelly said when I told him, just like Jesse Jackson? What'd he say? Don't, we ain't gonna let him make this racial because he want to. Jesse Jackson ain't no good, he, oh Lord, excuse me, either. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, come on, man. So come when on. you, what, what, we were trying to get a union. Union. I mean, there, there was no, there's no retirement. There's no, you know, they start doing things, and and and, and uh, I, the McMahon's that WWE and WWF has done a lot of things for a lot of people, good things, you know, and. We should mention you also had a little casual meeting with Triple H while you were up there. Oh, he he leaned in and. Hey, everything's all right, you know. I mean, in other words, we had a real successful trip, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with good people. God ain't through with me yet. What was your favorite part of this weekend, this Hall of Fame weekend? We went up there. You went up there with me. I did. It was fun. Yeah. Being on the, you know, it was interesting because being back in front of a live audience, twenty-one thousand people there at the Wells Fargo Center at the Hall of Fame ceremony. What I, you know, it was great that the, all the fans were there and, and they chanted your name at one point, but you look down at the front row and Haku 
is right down there. And you mentioned him in That's your speech. That's the best man. In that. Now, they talk about him now. They talk about what they talk about him is true. But the Harley races and them boys out there that say they're bad, with, they ain't bad. They ain't bad. They ain't bad. No haku. Uh, haku and Bo Bear is something other, man. Something just like that Brock, Brock Lester and, and Sheldon Benjamin. That's the best thing you had up there, man. I, I, well, I won't go there. I don't know why. Well, I see, see, and hush. Claude. There you go. Now, uh, also, just to clarify, because we've done this, but I think it's important, you got the name Thunderbolt from Shires. Jew? No, no, no. No, no, Jewel Strongbow. Strongbow. Yes. Los Angeles, California. And he called you that because? Well, he said he heard a little something. And he asked me what the called sound like. I told him that was my name. He said, but not no more. That's when I got the name. Thunderbolt ever since. When you were 1967. in... 1967. 67. What would you say was your greatest match? Oh, man, I, I couldn't say that. I couldn't say that. I've been in the ring with the best of the best. I mean, the Billy Rock. I've been in the ring with all of the... Yeah, I've, been, Jack, I've been in the ring with Luke there. All, I touched everybody except Carl Gotch. Now, Carl Gotch is just like that hoop and barbarian. He bad, too. Yes. Tough man, tough man. <laughs> but I never did touch him. The biggest mistake I made was to let uh, Jose... You heard that name? Jose. Meet with Eddie Graham and uh, 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 Gotch when I was getting running my stuff. That's the biggest mistake I made. Now, you talked about Eddie Graham being a very brilliant mind. Oh, yeah. And what kind of a guy was Eddie Graham? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Never he, really? I had no relationship. All I know that when it come down to wrestling and what it, hey, he was him, Funk, and them guys. Who? Did you ever meet at any time with Vince McMahon Sr.? No. Well, he, I don't even think I met him that night that I went up there with the Sheik. I, I don't think I even met him then, no. Uh, Bill Watts, Fritz Von Erich. What kind of guy was Fritz? I lived, I had I had a farm in Fort Worth, in Hazel, twitch in between. I was out by the Dallas airport. I got a, Fritz, me, Fritz was a big hunter. I had a dog from him, da da da, bird dog, and Fritz was the reason I went to Florida. For it, it, Florida was down, and Fritz asked me would I go to Florida and help him out, and he would, uh, when I get back, we go into some businesses together. What do you make about that whole, they just did a movie about it, The Iron Claw. What do you make of that whole Von Erich tragedy? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get into that because I don't know nothing about it. Them were kids. Them, all them boys. I got one picture with the one that's, I think you're living. Kevin. And that was done in Florida. When I, that's when I, Bruce wrote it. That's when I met ran one that bell from Bruce Bowden in Florida. But I don't know nothing about those kids. What was Bruce Brody like? Good friend. Bad son of gun boy. I mean they just stole him. I mean just that's a that was that was tragic. when he when he was murdered, what was that like? I d I wasn't there. No, but when you heard about it. I wish I was there. Yeah. That is a horrible thing. I mean I I just I wasn't there, but I... Uh, when you were traveling, Ole Anderson, obviously, you're connected with. Who is somebody else you would say you had a good connection with? Ronnie Garvin. Ronnie Garvin. Robert Fuller. Robert Fuller. Those are the guys. Mm -hmm. And is there anybody you didn't get to work with you wanted to? No. Not, no. I know you worked with Ric Flair. A waste of time. Now, for people who might ask why. Uh, man, it's the same thing. Same thing and uh, it's all about... Uh, well, I, I, I don't want to go to the dark side of it, you know? 
I don't want to go to the, I don't want to go. I, no, I wouldn't allow him do things. You know, I mean, I wouldn't, and that's, uh, and him and Dusty, they were bookers. They were running stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't want to, you know, it is what it is. It's happened, and all of them know about it. So, you know. Now, when you were in WCW there with Ole, Ole brought you back because he was the booker. Bill Watts was running. Bought me what? Uh, brought you in for shots, right? Oh, yeah. Ole, yeah. Bill Watts was running the company at one point there. <laughs> how how was running the uh, W? He, him, he, he, that was that summary. That's when he put the N word on Hank Aaron. Aaron Garen. That's Bill, Billy Bumboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Didn't turn out too good for him. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he didn't. He didn't change. He got religion now. They say, you know. So if everybody got the opportunity and chance. If they want to. I mean, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. That's that blood. One name we have not touched on, we got to touch on before we run out of time, Big Cat Ernie, Ernie Ladd. I mean, if, 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 I was stranded. I was stranded in Houston, Texas. And uh, they went away to that, and I said, Paul was sitting down to the table, it, uh, writing. And I said, uh, sir, when do I come back to work? Going on for Christmas. Paul looked up and he said, well, you don't have to come back. My, 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 it, it dropped, it went all the way through me, come boom. You know, and uh, uh, Destroyer, Dick Byers, the Destroyer, got me booked in L.A. And uh, Ernie was on his way back to training camp. He was, at that time, he was working with the uh, San Diego Charger, I believe. But, and I caught a ride with him. <clears throat> Ernie Ladd had a unique way about him. What 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 did you, what kind of friendship did you have with Ernie Ladd? Ernie was a good friend. One time, one, on, on that trip, on that trip, we stopped into a restaurant. And you know, didn't nobody know nothing about me, because I was but they recognized Ernie. And so this man said, it's a place, eat all you want, chicken, eat all you want. So this man said, I'm going to get a camera to come back and take y'all's picture. Man, Ernie ate 56 pieces of chicken and all 56. the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean, all, and when that guy came back and saw them doggone bones on that table, he said, y'all get on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he don't want to the picture. To, he didn't want to take no picture. <laughs> all that chicken. And that's why they called him the big cat. Yeah, I, and Ernie was a good friend of mine. How good a wrestler was he? Ernie was a football player. I mean, I ain't going to say he's no wrestler. I don't know about all that now. I, I was a football player. Well, I bring that up because, you know, obviously we know the Bill Watts story. Well, that, well see, that's the whole thing. All them so-called whatever, like Ernie, I go up one side, I got over to him too. I wrestled him too, because I was the heel and the, 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 you know what I'm saying? Well, and there, there, there is this Just because he big, that didn't mean nothing. Still went in there. Not one thing. I went up to one side and come down the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's just the way it was. Right. Well, I, I bring that up because we, we just talked about Bill Watts and people know what happened with him and Hank Aaron. But, uh... Well, but, see, 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 hypocrites. Hypocrites. Ernie called me to go to Ann Gunkel. Oh, Ernie right. ended up being a... Huh? Ernie called you. Ernie led, led, called me. When they took that away from her, the NWA, Ernie called me, and yeah. But he didn't go. He was there too. He was working for him. But he ended up in another place. Huh? He ended up with Bill Watts at one point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ernie was not only not only with the uh, uh, Ann Gunkel. Ernie worked for Ironhorn too. I did too. So, and Junkyard Dog became a big draw for Bill Watts. Yeah, that's what they say. So, a lot of people have trouble figuring Bill Watts out because he would oh, say can't stuff. Can't nobody figure Bill out. I that's, mean, what, that's the thing. Well, they, uh, well, man, Bill Watts gave me a thousand dollars, like I told you, for a sellout. I had 12 dozen of shirts 
He pushed them up under the rain. He didn't sell now one of them. And them folk was hanging from the rafters. Wasn't a seed in the Superdome. So, no. I don't know. I ain't the one. I don't know what they, they do. Well, so, so, <laughs> so, so, so having worked for the man, um, what is your opinion of Bill Watts? He's Bill Watts. He was a bad son of a gun now. He wasn't no, he wasn't no pushover. He wasn't no pushover, but he, he wasn't a friend I thought he was. Vern, Gagne. Me. Vern Gagne. Hey, hey, don't come no better. So you, you had a good relationship with Vern? Yeah, yeah, I worked for him. Why do you think you never ended back up with Vern? I have no idea. Because he stayed in business, I think, till 1990. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've talked about Florida. We've talked about Texas. Oh, we haven't talked about the Funks. i never been back there. I went back. Was, there, was, uh, was the Northeast always the place where people wanted to go New York? I, I, I wouldn't... I didn't really know nothing too much about New York. And you also never ended up with Mushnick in St. Louis, right? What, what, that St. Louis was where the NWA head office is. Now, and you know, NWA has been out of business almost 20 years. And uh, I figured out why I hadn't. Been in there. There was Pat O'Connor. There was Harley Race. There was Jody Hamilton. And all them fathers didn't. I didn't. They didn't care too much for me. What did television mean to wrestling? Blow the world. Blow the world up. They I mean that uh, they go all over the world, man. When you think about people in the history of wrestling, who do you consider to be a great technical wrestler? Oh, man, it's a lot of them. A lot of them, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Hennon. Kirk Hennon. Not Kirk Hennon. Uh, Kirk, you know, Angle. Olympic Kurt Angle. Angle. Well, he Kirk, was there the other night. Yeah, Kirk Angle. Uh, 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 like I say, Brock Lesnar and uh, 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 Sheldon Benjamin is a bit. Danny Hodge. Hey, hey. Uh, Dale Lewis was. Sam Steamboat. Uh, 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 Billy Robinson. Man, all them guys. Whew. Did you ever spend any time around uh, Sweet Daddy Seeky? One time. One time. I met him in uh, uh, Australia in 68, I think it was. And he's still around. I think he's up in Canada he's in Canada, now. Canada, yeah. In Canada. He's saying country and rest me. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Now, Thunderbolt, we got two minutes left here. Most surprising phone call you've gotten since this whole thing. You say John Ringley has called. The most, I mean... That, that was the call. That uh, as soon as I got off my back, the, the call to go I was, in. I was there. I mean, I was offered the into the Hall of Fame, and when John Ringley heard of it, he asked Gerald, and Gerald gave him my number. See, Gerald done it. Bruce was there. So, so when John Ringley called, was it a good conversation? Oh man. If John Ringley was only, if John Ringley would have stayed in North Carolina, they'd still be running. And yeah, I'm trying to talk him in to come and do a little something with us. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And John Ringley, by the way, was the husband of Francis Crockett. Now, we're getting the flash here, just like back in the old days, Thunderbolt. One minute left to go. Tell the people out there why they need to stay tuned. Why they need to stay tuned? Why they stay with less than a minute to go? Less than a minute to go. Well, 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 well. I mean, to keep on listening to what Bruce Pritchett, WWE, is bringing it all up. You know, just, just the same as see Bishop Noel Jones, City of Refuge, Los Angeles, California. Bishop Bell Del Brana. My pastor is Keith Giles of Word of Life. And they're telling the truth. And that's it's all about Jesus. And that's the rap sign. We'll be back.